Let's keep busy, firefighters. Tidy fire station, tidy mine. No, no, no. Put your back into it, Cridlington. Ooh! Step aside. Uh, they might be a bit heavy, sir. Oh, nonsense. This is the way to get things done. Ah! Ah! Station Officer Steele, are uh, you all right? My back! Ah! Oh, dear. My back's gone. Oh. Uh, help him to the office, Penny. Oh, I'll phone Nurse Flood. Oh, wow! That is awesome! Oh, I'd like a crack at that. All I need is a really big kite. Are you sure you are comfortable, sir? I've made you a nice cup of tea. Stop fussing. I told you, I'm perfectly fine. How's the patient? There's nothing wrong with me. He's hurt his back, Nurse Flood. Ha! It's ridiculous. We've wasted enough time. Let's get back to the... The only place you're going is back home to rest. Easy does it. Careful now. But how will you manage without me? Don't worry, sir. I'll phone HQ for a replacement. Now you get inside and rest up that back of yours. Oh, yes. And you might need this. Oh, walking stick. I don't think so. Hello, Penny. Are we going skateboarding or kiting? Both. What? You're in the sea. I wonder who HQ will send to replace Station Officer Steele. Another girl about the place would be fantastic. <laughs> I hope it's someone who likes rock and roll. <laughs> How about you, Sam? <laughs> as long as it's somebody who can do the job, I don't really mind. Then it looks like they sent the right man. Chief Fire Officer Boyce. Poor old Steel. I came as soon as I heard the news. So, stop worrying. Everything is under control. <sighs> okay, ready to roll. What the Grizzlies? Ah! Oh, sorry, Moose. Hi, Moose. Wait for me, Norman. This is amazing. Oh, you have to try this, Sarah. Uh, I'm not sure. What's the matter? Scared? No, I'm not scared, actually. Well, prove it then. I will. Ready for liftoff. See? It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Over. You can lower the platform, Triddleton. Yes, Chief Fire Officer Boyce, sir. Boyce? Steel? What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be at home in bed? Not while there's work to be done. We're coping perfectly well, old chap. Old? Old? Who are you calling old? We just don't want you to rush back to work until you're ready, sir. I am ready. Ready and able. And reporting back for duty. Oh, oh. Hardly, oh. old chap. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have work to do. I'll lock Jupiter's platform, and after that I'll take you out for a spin, Cridlington. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, how does this go now? It, it's all under control, old chap. You can pop off now. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. Right, that's it. Stop! Stop! You're going too fast! I don't know how to stop! I don't like this! When I said ready for lift off, this isn't what I meant! Hang on! What do you think I'm doing? Ah. Whoa! Fiddlington, watch and learn. Uh-oh. I think she's stuck, sir. I, I can see that, Fiddlington. 
Well, don't just stand there. Try and push her out. Oh, um, right. Uh, <laughs> Fire Officer Boyce with Jupiter. Sam? Ah, it's a bit of a problem. Jupiter's stuck under the bridge. Oh, no! What are we going to do? Only one thing we can do, Penny. to cut the platform off. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Which way did she go? Across the field. That way. I didn't try to hang on to her, Sam. Don't worry, Norman. I'm here now. <laughs> Stay calm, Santa. I'll get a ladder. I heard shout. What's up? Get the ladder. I've got a better idea. Anything I can do, sir. Grab the other end of this, Moose. And hold tight. Okay, Sarah. Now lower yourself so you are just holding on by your hands. Now, when you drop, try and keep your back towards the floor. You can let go now. What on earth are you doing to my lovely engine? Oh, uh, Jupiter's stuck, and Chief Fire Officer Boyce wants to chop the platform off. What? There's no need for that. I suppose you have a better idea. I do, actually. Why not let the air out of the tyres, lower the vehicle, and roll her out? You may have something there, Steel. <laughs> This is all my fault, Sam. I didn't secure the lock on the platform properly. Very fiddly manoeuvre. And maybe I should get myself a pair of spectacles. <laughs> but Station Officer Steele was a real hero. He came up with a totally brilliant plan, didn't you, sir? Well, <laughs> I'm not too old to still have a few tricks up my sleeve. Uh, your back? Are you feeling all right, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I'm standing up straight and my back feels wonderful. So you'll be wanting to come back to work then? Oh, absolutely. If that's all right with Chief Fire Officer Boyce. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course. The fire station will be back in good hands under Station Officer Steel. Bye-bye. Old chap. <laughs> Old chap. <laughs> Bridlington, don't just stand there grinning. Remove this engine and get those tyres pumped up again. Oh, it's great to have you back, sir. <laughs> it's great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. Don't worry, Lannigans. I'll have you down in the Stopped under the bridge and she jumped on. Well, she's down now, Trevor. Come on, Penny. We'd best get back to the station. Chief Fire Officer Boyce is running a training day today. Right you are, Sam. I've just been doing my accounts and I noticed something very exciting. The next customer that walks through that door will be our one millionth customer. Wow! Is that a lot? Of course it's a lot. A million is hundreds and hundreds of thousands. I've got a totally brilliant idea. 
When that millionth customer comes in, we should do something really special. What a good idea. Why don't I go and make the lunch while you two think of something? Okay, okay Mum. Squish, what sort of training did you have in mind for us today? Well, first... Hello, Chief if... Fire Officer Boyce. We've just done the most unusual rescue. We had to get lamikins down from the top of a bus. <laughs> oh, my dear chaps, rescues can get a lot more unusual than that. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, really? Oh, yes. In fact, that's given me an idea. Today's training will be a firefighter's guide to unusual rescues. So, did you have any ideas about what to do for our millionth customer? Lords, Mum, we decided that when they walk in, there will be party poppers and bunting. And a huge cake that someone jumps out of and shouts, Surprise! Oh, my! Do you mean a real cake? No, a big pretend one. Well, that all sounds wonderful. But who are you going to get to make a big pretend cake before this evening? Mike! Hello, you two. We need you to make us a cake. Oh, <laughs> I'm not really a baker. That is not a real cake, Mike. It's a big pretend one. That someone can jump out of. Oh, that does sound like a challenge. And I do love a good challenge. I'll get started right away. That's the cake sorted. All we need now is someone to jump out of it. Oh, that's a tricky one. Hmm, who could it be? I know. I could do it. Look. Surprise. <laughs> hmm. I think we might need someone a little louder than that. There is absolutely no way I am going to wear a bow tie to Auntie Phyllis's wedding. Norman Price, you will wear a bow tie and that's the end of it. <sighs> All right, ma'am. Norman! We've got a really exciting job for you. Ooh. Now, the most unusual rescue I ever did was the time I rescued a horse that was stuck in a lift. All that unusual? I once had to winch a monkey out of a chimney pot. Um, sir, uh, sirs, are you actually going to demonstrate one of these rescues? Of course. Now, which one shall I do first? I know. <gasps> Luring a swarm of bees out of a gas barbecue. Call that a I think this could be a long day. There. All done. Me too. What do you think of that then, Bromwyn? Good enough to eat, eh? Oh, it's perfect, Mike. Wow! Look at that cake! Look, Mum, we've got Norman to shout surprise! Oh, how do I get in? Come over here, Norman. I'll show you. Well, I'd better get those fryers on. I want our one millionth customer to have fish and chips on the house. I'm sorry, Steve and chap, but rescuing a tug-of-war team out of a swimming pool full of baked beans is definitely more unusual than rescuing an opera singer from a tree. I beg to differ. The one thing this is teaching me is that I don't think I've done any really unusual rescues. Don't worry, Penny. I'm sure you will one day. Are you all right in there, Norman? It's a bit dark. Oh, look. Here comes Moose Roberts. He might be the millionth customer. Oh, he's gone straight past. The oil's getting nice and hot. I hope the one millionth customer turns up soon. Yes, my bottom's gone to sleep. Shh, Norman. Look. Here comes Dillis. Oh, she's heading straight for us. Ooh, how exciting. Oh, get ready, everyone. Has anyone seen my precious Norman? What are you lot staring at? Surprise! Oh, what on earth? You're our one millionth customer, Dillis. And here's a big surprise for you. Here's a surprise! A great big cake! Oh, if only my Norman could see this! Norman, jump out of the cake! I can't get out! I thought I just heard my Norman's voice. You did! He's in the cake! 
You baked my Norman in a cake? Oh. No! I made the cake out of wood! What? It was supposed to be a... Ooh. Oh, forget it. It's stuck. Let me out! Dennis, wake up! Oh, stick this! Shall I pop the party poppers now? They smell smoke. So do I! Oh no! I forgot to turn off the oil! Evacuate! Quick everyone! Head for the door! Abandon Kate! I'll call Fireman Sam! What's going on? Oh no! My lord, it's stuck in that cake! Don't worry, Gillis! I'll push the cake out! We will now demonstrate the procedure for extricating someone's foot from half a bucket of muscles. Ready, Norris? I certainly am. Excellent. Um, I, I, I actually can't get this off. A fire at the Hope Fish Cafe and Norman Price is trapped in a giant cake. A fire at the Whole Fish Cafe, and Norman Price is trapped inside a giant cake! My Norman! My poor Norman! Mike's still in there trying to get Norman out! Stand back, everybody! Norman, let's get you out of here. Are you the one millionth customer, Sam? Oh, my little Norman. Oh, I can't believe I didn't keep an eye on the fryer. You were very brave, Sam. And Penny. So was Mike. He tried his best to get Norman out of that cave. Is everyone all right? Yes, sir. But you missed Firefighter Morris executing a very unusual rescue, sir. I had to rescue Norman Price from a giant cake. Oh, I don't think we can top that, can we, sir? What about rescuing a chief fire officer's foot from half a bucket of muscles? Hmm. That should do it. Now, hold still. Panty Pioneers. Oh, sorry, ma'am, but I was polishing my shoes. <gasps> no, you weren't. You were playing that Fireman Heroes video game. Oh, Norman, I've told you about playing that game. You'll go boggle-eyed. But, ma'am, it's Fireman Heroes. I know so much about firemen now, I don't even need to go to the fire station to get my firefighter's badge. Don't be so silly, Norman. Being a fireman in a video game is very different to being one in real life. That's what I said, Auntie Dillis. No, you didn't. All you said was, give me the controls I want to go. Now stop it, you two, and give this to Trevor. Just in case he gets a bit thirsty. Uh, <laughs> we will, OK. Now, firefighters, we have the Ponty Pandy Pioneers coming in today. So, I'll need two of you to help them get their firefighter's badge. Ooh, ooh. Can I do it? I love the Ponty Pandy Pioneers. Oh, I don't think so, Cridlington. I seem to remember talk of you making one of your mm, very special cottage pies for tea. Oh, yes, Elvis. I was rather looking forward to that. Hmm, me too. OK. Cottage pie it is, then. Oh, that sounds like them now. Let's go and greet them. I'll start chopping my onion. Good morning, Fireman Sam. I'll leave the pioneers in your capable hands. I'll be back at tea time to pick them up. I'm sure they will have all earned their firefighter's badge by then. Well, I'll have my badge. In fact, Fireman Sam will think I'm such a good firefighter. He'll probably ask me to join the fire service. We are the pioneers. So give me very big and 
A word in your ear. We've got Norman Price in today, and uh, you know what he's like. If he sniffs your pie, I don't fancy its chances. If you catch my drift. Oh, I do, Station Officer Steele. Don't worry, I'll find a good place to hide it. <laughs> Now this is what we use in a very smoky situation so we can breathe. Wow. Ah, there are different fire extinguishers for different types of fire. This one is for flammable liquids. I knew that. Ooh. What's up there, Fireman Sam? Oh, why don't we all have a look? Do you think they'll let me have a go at sliding down the pole? Of course they won't. You're not a qualified firefighter. They might let me have a go, though. Come on, pioneers. Upstairs. Delicious. Now, Penny, would you care to demonstrate how to use the pole? Of course, Sam. First, you grasp the pole with both hands, pull yourself to the pole. I knew that. Now, wrap your legs around it very tightly and slide down. Whoa! Oh, oh, me now! I don't think so, Norman. Uh, we won't be having any injuries today. Oh. Now, let's go and see Station Officer Steele's office. And we'll take the stairs. Come on, pioneers. Oh. As a firefighter, there are many skills that you need. Driving a fire engine, for instance. Anyone can drive a fire engine. Oh, you can't. They wouldn't even let you slide down the pole. But I bet you I could drive Jupiter. All right then, Norman. Prove it. I will. Now, where can I hide my pie where Norman Price can't find it? it oh, that's it. On top of Jupiter. He'll never look up there. The coast is clear. Get in, Derek, quick! See, look, I'm driving. That's not driving, Norman. Yes, it is. See? Here I go. I'm driving now, see? Just like in my game. I hope you really can drive a fire engine, Norman. Why? Because we're starting to move. Ah! But the real key to being a great firefighter is to be observant. You need to keep your eyes peeled and your wits about you at all times. Now you wind up this window. Stay still. You kick the accelerator. What's that? You just kicked! My Norman was really looking forward to his day at the fire station. He thinks he might be a fireman one day. Oh, imagine that. My Norman a fireman. I'd be so proud. Oh, look! Here he comes now to close the fire engine. Oh! Norman's driving a fire engine! Oh, dear. I better call fireman tell him. That's how you become a great firefighter. Ooh, stand back, pioneers. Looks like we have an emergency. Norman Price has just been spotted driving Jupiter through Ponty Pandy. Norman Price has just been spotted driving Jupiter through Ponty Pandy. He was here a minute ago. I'll stay and keep an eagle eye on the rest of the pioneers. Roger that, Sam. 
Mummy's here. Oh, you saved my pie! You frightened the light out of me. Sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, Fireman Sam. I was stupid. He was. I thought I was a firefighter just because I played a video game. Driving a big fire engine like Jupiter was a very reckless and dangerous thing to do. I know, Sam. I'm sorry. Well, at least everyone is okay. Not everyone. Oh, no. I was really looking forward to that pie. Don't I get a firefighter's badge, Fireman Sam? I'm afraid you two are not quite ready for your firefighter's badge, Norman. But you might be getting one badge today. Ooh, what? A cooking badge. You two are going to make another cottage pie. And I'm going to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you need to make this snowman, Norman? Well... I need your best hat with the feathers on and that coat you wore to Auntie Phyllis's wedding. Hold your horse brasses, Norman Price. You are not taking my best hat and coat to put on the snowman. But, Mum, I want this to be the best snowman ever. You'll use what I used to make a snowman when I was a little girl. Coal for the eyes, a carrot for the nose and a bucket for the hat. <laughs> Snowman will be rubbish. It'd be fine, Norman. <laughs> Trevor Evans. Well, really. <laughs> Come on, Mandy. Let's go make a snowman. Oh, Trevor. You are like an articulated explorer. Oh, look. That would be perfect oh, for the snowman. But isn't that your mum's best scarf? Yes. Uh, and then I'll fix you a nice hot drink to warm your cockles. I, uh, I don't have any cockles. She only said we couldn't take her hat and coat. She didn't say anything about her scarf. Are you sure it's OK, Norman? Damn positive. Firefighters, due to the snowy conditions in Pontypandy, I'm afraid to inform you that the power to the fire station has gone down. Tridlington, will you shiver a bit more quietly, please? I can't hear myself think. Sorry, sir. I can't help it. I, I'm really cold. So if we don't have any electricity, does that mean we can't get any emergency calls, sir? No, Sam. We can take the calls on the emergency backup line. But in the meantime, we have no <laughs> heating at all. Bridlington, will you please stop your teeth from chattering? I'm trying, sir. Oh, no. Why don't I get the old brazier going? and we can all huddle round it and keep warm. I think my teeth would really like that, Sam. <laughs> ah, there. It just needs the finishing touch. Uh, perfect. Well, it might be if it didn't have that dirty old rag round its neck. Where's your mum's best scarf, Norman? That is my mum's best scarf. Oh, it's got coal from your fingers all over it. <gasps> oh, no. I'll be in so much trouble. I did tell you, Norman. Oh, what am I going to do? There's only one thing we can do. Take it in the house and wash it. Uh, I'll have this going in no time, Elvis. Uh, there. Ah. This brazier isn't making me feel very warm, Sam. Oh, that's because it isn't lit, Elvis. Sam can put fires out, but he doesn't seem to be very good at lighting them. No. <laughs> but I know how you can warm up, Elvis. A bit of firefighter fitness. Firefighter fitness? I'm not sure I like the sound of that. You missed a bit, Norman. It's the best I can do. Right then. Let's hang it up outside to dry. Don't worry, Norman. It'll be as good as new in no time. It's still not working. Hang on. Yeah. I, I think I've got it. Oh, I say. No, 
It's gone again. I'll need to check the generator. Oh! Ow! What's that? Sweet LinkedIn, what on earth are you doing now? Trying to keep warm, sir. I'm just putting Elvis through a new firefighter fitness routine I've worked out, sir. Oh, excellent idea, firefighter Morris. As you were, Grittington. Come on, Elvis, knees up. Up, up, up. Is it dry, Norman? Hi. It's as stiff as my skateboard. What am I going to do? My mum's best scarf in the whole wide world is frozen solid. You need to melt it, Norman, and then dry it. <gasps> You're right, Mandy. And I know just the place to do it. Are you sure that's a good idea? Of course, Mandy. The heat will melt all the ice and dry the scarf. Come on, let's go and play snowballs. How's the fire coming on there, Sam? Well, I've got a bit of flame going now, sir. I, I think we're on our way. Ah, now, what you have to do is give it a nice, smooth blow. That'll have it roaring away in no time. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't all that smooth, was it, sir? Yes, uh, well, uh, maybe a tad on the blowy side. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, keep up the good work, Sam. Very good. Smell of a roaring fire. Hi. Sorry, Sam. Toast in no time. <laughs> Excellent work, Mike. Ooh, an emergency. Fire at the Flood's house. Oh, there's a fire at the Flood's house. Oh, a fire at the Flood's house. Wait a minute, that's where I live. Be a bit overdone. I'm in such a lot of trouble. No change there, then, Norman. I think you might need a new one, Dillis. Norman, I can't believe you ruined my best scarf. Sorry, ma'am. But there is a way you can make it up to me. <gasps> there is? I need you to make something else out of the snow. What? Another snowman? No. A path down the road so Trevor. Uh, I mean, my, my customers will stop slipping about all over the place. <laughs> Good idea, Dillis. Oh, Mum! It's 
so firefighters must always be prepared to step up when the public needs them. We're dancing in the firehouse, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. We're dancing in the firehouse, yeah, yeah. Ridlington! Oh, um, sorry, sir. I'm just practicing my song for the charity concert. You've been practicing that same song for a week. It's driving me mad. Maybe you should practice somewhere else, Elvis. Okay. Oh, uh, Station Officer Steele, will you be singing at the concert tonight? Me sing? Oh, uh, no, 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 I don't think so. Now, where was I? You were just saying that firefighters must be willing to step up when the public needs them. Ah, yes. I was just about to add, um... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, no. Now I'm singing that infernal song. A little higher. A little higher. Don't go any higher. A little higher. Dad, can you hammer this poster in for us, please? OK, love. This concert is going to be the greatest. I can't wait! Mum says Elvis is planning a big surprise. The poster's too high. Dancing, singing, the fire bell is ringing. We're dancing in the firehouse. Oh, how am I supposed to drink my tea and cover my ears at the same time? I've heard this infernal song so many times, I'm singing it in my sleep. Why don't we go down to the quay and give the stage a safety check, sir? Ah! An excellent idea, Sam. Anything to escape this dreadful racket. We're dancing in the firehouse. I've got the van. Are you ready to go to Newtown to collect the big surprise? Oh, yes, please, Mike. I can't wait. A surprise? What is it? <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see, Trevor Evans. I'll see you tonight for the big concert. Much prefer the sound of Marjorie any day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about my big guitar. <laughs> With this on the stage, I'll look like a proper rock star. It will be my best entrance ever. Oh, it will, Elvis. I can't wait to see it. Uh oh, that doesn't sound good. The lights are all in good working order, sir. How does the generator look? Uh, it's ringing. We're dancing in there. Sir. Oh! Sam! You mustn't sneak up on a fellow like that. <laughs> you were singing Elvis's song again. I was? Oh, dear. I can't get that infernal tune out of my head. If I may say so, sir, you have a very good singing voice. Maybe you should sing a song tonight. What? Me? <laughs> no, terrible idea, Sam. I'm afraid people would laugh at me if they heard my caterwauling. Oh, the radiator holes must have broken. Looks like we're not going anywhere. What about the concert? What about my big guitar? Maybe we could carry it. <gasps> That's a brilliant idea, Mike. If we cut across that field, we'll be at the quay in no time. No, the key's that way. Uh, uh, no, it's definitely that way. Trust me, I recognise that cloud. I'm telling you, Penny, Station Officer Steele has a really nice singing voice. Do you think he'll sing a song at the show tonight? You know something? I think he's a bit scared of singing on stage. Really? Anyway, you go on and enjoy the concert. I'll man the station. I'm sure I'll have a quiet night. I think we're lost, Elvis. We're not lost. The key is this way. That way is the cliffs. No, the cliffs are by those trees. I think you're wrong, Elvis. I'm not wrong. In fact, I've never been more right. I know exactly where we're going. Ah! Say, I told you we were heading towards the cliffs. Oh, oh sorry, my. Oh, it's a long way down. Ah. But it was meant to have started ages ago. Excuse me, Station Officer Steele, but have you seen Elvis? He seems to be missing. Cridlington is missing? Yes. If he doesn't arrive soon, we'll have to cancel the show. We have no singer. Oh, I say. Oh! I am pulling! It's time to phone fire! 
Diamond Sub. Mike Flood is hanging off a cliff, clinging to a giant guitar. And I thought this would be a quiet night. Tom, this is Sam. We're going to need some back. Hold on, Mike. Sam will be here soon. I can't hold on much longer, Elvis. <laughs> Kids, but it's getting late. I think we ought to go home. Oh, please, Mum. Can't we wait just a little longer? Well, we've run out of time. I'll have to send everyone home. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry, but Elvis is not here tonight. So, I'm afraid... I'm afraid there will be a change in tonight's programme. I will sing for you. You? Yes, me. After all, firefighters must always be prepared to step up when the public needs them. Are you ready? Of course. Marjorie and I are always ready. Clap your hands and take your toes. Become your head lit and fire hose. Gonna have a great big celebration. Everybody's dancing at the fire station. Well, Mike, you're safe and sound. In the future, you two need to be a lot more careful. I'm glad you're safe, Mike. But I'm a bit sad that I missed the show. Even if I could make it now, my big entrance is ruined. Tom? Yes, sir? How do you fancy a trip to a concert? We're dancing in the firehouse, yes, yes. We're dancing in the firehouse, yes, yes. Dancing, singing, the fire bell is ringing. We're dancing. Quite looking forward to the next charity concert. In fact, Cridlington, I have some musical ideas I'd like to discuss with you. <laughs> Ooh, brilliant. <laughs> Wait. 